Welcome back and today is uh, 6th of October on a Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and if you're watching from Asia, that will be 10.30 p.m. Singapore Asia Time. Welcome back, really excited to be back here today. Uh, we got so many things to go through for, <laughs> for the part two of what I started off sharing yesterday. Uh, yesterday, we ended off with a big, big discussion on oil price and I think Again, today, uh, kind of a reiterated, reaffirmed and re-verified what I put out across yesterday. All right, so welcome back. Really excited to see all of you. And before we get started, make sure we warm up to the crowd. <laughs> welcome back. And if you're watching live right now, I encourage you to go and post on a live chat at YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and so on, all right? So I like to love to see your response and making sure you're part of the uh, audience together with me. So welcome back and let me pay my greetings to the following. Wow, so many of you showing up right now. <laughs> okay, we have uh, Marcus. Uh, good to see you, Calvin. Uh, good evening to you, CK, JLo, Jacqueline. Good to see you. Yes, uh... I'm I'm feeling better right now, but not hundred percent recovered. I realized that you know I I still have uh, some fatigue kicking in, and uh, my wife was just sharing with me that uh, usually takes about one week. Uh, so I'm like trying to squeeze that time for recovery. <laughs> but I uh, uh, I think I got more energy back today, right? So I think I just need uh, lots of uh, what we call a straight eight hours sleep. Hi, welcome, Rose Ryan. Good to see you. Jeanette, uh, Milton, Wilson, wow, Jeffrey, Chuman, Elton, Pink One. Wow, good to see you, Pink One. I think see you for the first time. King Yip, Edmund, Ronnie, Adeline, Bokui, and welcome to everyone, all right? Now, if you have not watched yesterday's video, don't worry about it. You can watch on the, go to our YouTube channel, look out for yesterday. That will be considered day 84, and today we are already day 85. Remember, this is... 100-day stock market inspiration. We're going to push it all the way to day 100 and I'm going to change the entire format all over again. All right, so where we left off yesterday is about oil. And again, you know, if you go consensuously, go out there to hunt for any articles related to oil, what would be your finding? And this is where, you know, you got to play your part. I will play my part. Tell me which is the most important article of the day and then we see if there's a match between both, both of our findings. If there's a match, match, congratulations. We are thinking about the same issue. And here we go. All right. So let me set this up right now. A really important discussion for today. Here we go. This is the big, big important article of the day. Here's what Goldman to UBS say about oil after the big OPEC cut. OPEC plus cut. Analysts see global benchmark Brent rallying back above $100 per barrel, right? RBC says actual reduction likely to be about 1 million barrels. So we start off with this, and then we knew for a certain fact that Washington is really, really upset with uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, especially taking the lead to reduce the production. Uh, they, are got, they are getting really upset. They will probably find ways to punish Saudi Arabia once they finish their midterm election. But right now, they are left exactly about four weeks. Uh, quite a lot of things for them to prepare for the midterm. Uh, they will not forget this move to, uh, yesterday. So I'm sure they'll be coming back uh, fast and furious. Don't worry about that. And that's the style of the administration. Now, what is Morgan Stanley telling the world today, right? Here we go. Brand will find its way to $100 a barrel quicker than we estimated before. All right, so uh, the bank increased brand forecast $5 to $100 for the first three months, 2023, while keeping its outlook unchanged for the next three quarters. So I really like this kind of a statement. For the next three quarters, no change in the outlook, very stable. We can live up to the prediction. But right now is the opportunity to take advantage of this movement. All right? So this is where the central piece of the thinking will be focused upon. 
Next, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is saying all the development we've seen on the supply side at this point very much sets a stage for what we believe will be higher prices into the end of this year. So we are talking about Santa Claus rally. This is a very, very, <laughs> this is a very, very clear giveaway, right? The bank increased its fourth quarter estimate for Brent by ten dollars to one one zero. Just some was one hundred. This is one one zero. All right. Now we are pushing for one. Uh, we talk. We are not talking about brand crude oil. We are talking about standard crude oil. We are pushing for one five zero. All right. We go to come to that later on. All right. So we have another target price for brand one one zero. Here we go. Next, UBS AG. What is their price target above one hundred dollars over the coming quarters? All right. Good enough for us. Next, ING. What is their price target? Uh. Forecast of $97 a barrel for the next year. You know, I don't know why they have to put like 97. Why, why can't they just think in nice round numbers? What's wrong with all these analysts? So precise, 97. Might as well put 97.77. <laughs> right? Absurd. Why would you predict like 97? Think in terms of the last digit as zero. This is like, this is not a sale price. Next, Citigroup. Here we go. Boom. Citigroup, what are they talking about right over here? No price target, waste of time. RBC, no price target, waste of time. And of course, uh, White House has mentioned that they're going to release even further the strategic petroleum reserve. Now, typically, the strategic petroleum reserve is released upon acts of God. I say again, op traditionally, it was activated they will activate the strategic petroleum reserve based on acts of God like natural disaster, not for the purpose of fighting price. Now, Joe Biden has broken the cardinal rule. He did it this year to reduce the price of oil and he's going to do it again. So in a way, they kind of um, backtrack on the original intent of the strategic petroleum reserve. But you, you, we don't have to worry for the Americans because we've got tons of oil hidden out there, right? So they want to activate, it's for them. But much as you activate, then this is where the OPEC will play the game. You release more strategic petroleum reserve, then OPEC simply cut more output so that you're still declining in terms of the supply side. And uh, this will go on and on. It's a... Um, Mickey, Mickey Mouse game, all right? SPI asset management, all right? Another price target, $100 right here. And with this first piece of article, we kind of uh, settle on a framework. Brand confirmed everyone aiming for minimum 100. No brainer. This one is uh, quite, quite a nice one, all right? Now, we're going to work on the crude side of things, which is the standard way of us looking at oil. They want to use brand like a leading indicator. It's fine. But I want to refer to another article which kind of an authority for oil price um, and that's found at oilprice.com, right? So let's check this out. Norway to boost oil and gas production as expects record 2023 revenue. That's on the headline. But I want to work on the price prediction by Morgan Stanley. Oil prices will hit $100 next quarter. Okay. So, of course, we are in the uh, fourth quarter right now. So, the next quarter means Q1, January, February, March. And typically, they want to push the timeline further away so that their prediction will come through. Most likely, I think this year will hit 100 already. Cold winter season. <laughs> and later on, I'll share with you some of the key pointers why it will break $100 easily. All right. So, here we go. Oil prices will again rise to $100 per barrel. Faster than previously estimated, Morgan Stanley said, uh, lifting his price forecast for the first quarter 2023 to $100 from 95 Now, that is what we call a nice prediction, nice round number, okay? Brand will find $100, all right, this one we know about it. And we continue the two, 2 million barrels per day cut from November. This, uh, is, this was what was announced yesterday, all right? Now, one part here, 
We need to read out this entire sentence. OPEC Plus agreed on a 2 million barrel per day cut from November. So it will start from November, but the actual reduction in supply from Alliance is estimated around 1 million. Considering that many producers haven't pumped to quotas for months because of a lack of capacity, so they can't even like... <laughs> <laughs> they are not even pumping out optimal, optimal output yet. And in Russia's case, because of sanctions, can't even release the oil back into the market. All right. So most of actual cuts will come from Saudi Arabia and other Gulf producers. This is the main thing. So numerically, they put out headline like $2 million, $2 million barrels per day cut. But in actual fact, it will be $1 million barrel per day cut. All right. So... Where is this deficit? So this is the part I really love this article. Morgan Stanley Ler sees the deficit on the oil market swelling to 900,000 barrels per day next year, up from 200,000 barrels per day deficit previously expected. All right. So uh, I think it's going to hit more than 1 million barrels per day. All right. It's going to hit more than um, the deficit... It's going to hit more than 1 million. Now, I will put forward this point in a short while. Let's finish this article first. The, those forecasts assume that Russia's oil production will fall by 1 to 1.5 million barrels per day after EU oil import embargo comes into force. Okay, so most of them are floating around at 100 to 110. Goldman Sachs is 110. Morgan Stanley is 100. Nice. Any other thing that we need to take note of? We found an attachment to 2023. Here we go. Given the last supply cut recently announced by OPEC+, Plus, the global market will likely be in deficit through the whole 2023, suggesting that there is upside to our current forecast. The bank currently sees brand trading largely within $90 area for the remainder of this year and into the first half of 2023 before strengthening our second half of 2023. So why I like about this thesis, this is very just oil-centric. We, we don't complicate with other things like inflation, interest rate, oh my gosh, employment data, technology spending. So it's just really pure clean. And I want to really just focus on one or two things, not too many things, because we've been pounded left, right, center, top, right and bottom starting from January 2022 until right now. So many things to grapple with. Inflation, interest rate, interest rate, and then you have the isolation of China, inverted yield curve, implosion of the crypto market, so many things. Now we've got to focus on just one or two things to get it right, okay? So I set up this stage because I think we can formulate a clearest thesis just on the oil market. Then, of course, we look for trigger events. And that's typically how we play the market, all right? Not, not because, like, you know, you just invest and you, you're just sitting, sitting dark here waiting for things to happen. No, there must be trigger events that will precipitate or accelerate or ignite this oil price to flame up to a higher price range, all right? So first of all, before I got dive into the key ingredients that will kind of flame this up, we go and take a look first at the current crude oil. So let's go to the crude oil chart right now. Very, very important. Crude oil right now is 88 bucks. Boom. And here we go. Nice. Okay. This is the crude oil chart. And... Don't have to look that far away. Uh, if we start from 2020, bottom left, the chart looks like this. And I'm going to do a few things to kind of a press for a 150 target, all right? I'm going to click on maximum and squeeze it out. Squeeze as much as I can squeeze. And here we go, all right? And do some adjustment so they can uh, see more within one frame, all right? So this is the frame I want to take a look. Let me just adjust a little bit. 
And you start from here. Here we go. This is the 150 mark, which I believe is the target. Because there's intentional uh, play by the OPEC plus cartel to reduce the production to push oil prices up. And not only that, you know, you just need certain uncertainties to kickstart in the marketplace, boom, oil will shoot even further. So I'm going to drop from 150 down, and historically we could see that, hey, the 125 to 150 range was kind of breached in 2008 during the subprime crisis, right? So that period has really experienced oil price at the, at the peak, which, you know, is unbelievable obscene profits to the OPEC cartel. They want to go back to that, those good days. But if I drop further to $100, then you begin to understand the rationale. Hey, why the heck they want to reduce the production because of this? They experience this era, nice profit. And once you tasted, <laughs> once you tasted the goodies, and then you experience it again, experience it again, experience it again, experience it again. And then for the longest time, they didn't experience it. And finally, holy moly, it came up here. And then it dropped back down. So this is the moment in time they feel that perhaps the average price of oil should be trading above 100. So that they can make, make money of every single party out there and Making the most money is their number one defense against any enemies because money can allow them to buy weapons, buy mercenary soldiers, buy assassins, buy whatever they want to buy. <laughs> and then this is the part. What does it take to push it up? So that they control the politics of the world through oil. So if I set out this thesis, we say, okay, the 100 to 150. In fact, from 88 to go back to 100 is already a game. It's, it's really a big positive already. Right now, from the two articles I've gone through with you, you can really see what everybody is thinking. It's, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Brand must go above 100. All right? Crude oil, likewise, will follow suit. It's a matter of end of this quarter or the, 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 the start of the first quarter next year, okay? So we formulated this thinking. Now, once we got this thinking in place, then we start hunting down what will be the triggers, all right? And what will be the triggers is really, really important. So I'm going to play you a video first, and let's see if I can uh, get this video ready. All right, I got a video ready right now. Today is like I'm looking a little bit dark because I want to have that mysterious look. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Three, two, one, check this out. Breaking tonight, the situation with North Korea just escalated and dramatically as the Hermit Kingdom has just fired two more ballistic missiles. Remember, the North Koreans fired one over Japan during the morning rush hour yesterday for the first time in five years. Then the United States and South Korea responded with joint missile drills in the area, warning that the missile launches must stop. And then just in the last couple of hours, North Korea fired the two unidentified ballistic missiles. That's according to the South Korean military and the Japanese. Today's launch came as the UN Security Council was meeting to discuss the very aggressive moves that North Korea has been making and after Secretary of State Tony Blinken warned that North Korea must change its ways. I think uh, what we're seeing is that if they continue down this road, it will only increase the condemnation, increase the isolation, increase the steps that are taken uh, in response to their actions. Well, that didn't do it. Secretary Blinken says the commitment to U.S. allies in the region is ironclad. The South Korean military reports it's at full readiness posture. All right, you've seen it, and here we go. 
Now we begin to understand the context for this oil thesis, and that is we got some crazy folks who love to fire missiles. You just have the missile go wrong and land and kill ordinary folks. That will be the provocation of war, right? So I'm thinking of this, and then I show you the latest article. And you guys, you guys can go and formulate your research. I highly encourage you to do that. Uh, it's going to be very helpful to you. And here we go. North Korea planes stage bombing drill right now. It's no longer about firing just the missiles. They are bombing drill after two ballistic missiles fired. Look at this mama right here. All right, so they go out with a big, big campaign. And uh, I don't know, are they preparing for war or what? This guy's gone crazy already, right? So uh, South Korea, they have to scramble their fighter jets after North Korean warplanes stage an apparent bombing drill on Thursday, which is today. South Defense Ministry said as alike, warships help missile defense drills and Poyang fired off the latest in a series of ballistic missiles. The rare bombing drill by at least eight North Korean fighter jets and four bombers prompted the South to deploy 30 <laughs> fighters. The warplanes swam each side of the heavily fortified border amid rising tensions over a string of missile tests by Pyongyang. So continue. And this part is crazy. 40 missiles this year, and I'm just calculating... You just need one out of 40 to go wrong. One divided by 40. That's a 2.5% probability rate. You just need one missile to go wrong. Boom. You're going to have the biggest <laughs> war taking place between North and South. All right. So, um, I mean, they are like testing each other's patient, testing each other's patient. One day, the probability will hit. It's a math of law. Uh, so, continue firing right here. And, and you know, um, they are also going to do one more thing that is very, very scary. First, I introduced to, to you the concept of ICBM, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Long Range, Super Long Range and appears ready to hold its first nuclear test since 2017. So what's 2017? Today we are 2022, that's more than five years ago, and most of us probably already for, forgotten the fact that they stopped organizing nuclear tests. They're going to reignite that right now. So can you see how dangerous? We already have two nations talking about launching nuclear. One is launching nu nuclear bomb, the other one is launching nuclear tests. One is Russia, and the other one is North Korea, both communists. And they are backed by the biggest communists in town, China. So this is becoming like, is it democracy against communism? I'm not too sure. But it's a, it's a mind troubling period in our generation. So let's continue right over here. As a result... The U.S. deployed the aircraft carrier USS Ronald Reagan. Now, the moment you have the aircraft carrier deployed there means it's like ready for war. Because once this guy comes near you, they will jam up your entire communication system in the country, fly off their fighter jets, drop bombs, return, refill, continue. All right, This is exactly as what the movie has uh, shown us. But this is for real. And of course... The missile launch was the sixth in 12 days and the first since North Korea fired an intercontinental range missile over Japan on Tuesday, which prompted South Korea and US missile drills in which one weapon crashed and burned. So, this is the context of the oil thesis. We can go through this all night long, and the more you read about it, it's just a matter of time one party will go wrong. Is a matter of time. It's just like selling live bullets and guns to ordinary people. You just take one idiot to start killing, the rest will start following. Right? So this is the law of nature, but it is what it is. 
And then I want to finish off this article and we're going to arrive at our decision point. All right. So huge, huge article today. Please go and read about it. And um, I mean, they're also talking about the range. Thursday's first missile probably flew to an altitude about 100 kilometers above ground and a range of 350 kilometers uh, across the sky. While the second estimated 50 kilometers and covered 800 kilometers, probably taking an irregular trajectory. Wow, look at the kind of a weapon system. This is crazy, crazy. Okay, so we've gone through this part. I think... Um, that's the first, first trigger. I, I'm not too sure how you all feel right now. Can you all sleep well at night? <laughs> this teacher is always showing us very scary <laughs> news outlet. So, uh, are you able to sleep tonight? Let me post a question right now. Are you able to sleep <laughs> well at night? <laughs> all right. I want to hear some feedback from you guys. <laughs> Milton is saying like suit the lighting you have right now <laughs> I never thought of that <laughs> and LT is saying pray first then sleep and I have God with me from Ronnie and there is Emeline okay so why are we doing this is because we are formulating the, the thesis to dive really deep into the energy sector. I think it's an important key sector. Uh, all various sources of data is pointing to the fact that it has to go up, but I'm thinking about it has to go up even much higher. You just need a few parties to make one mistake. Yeah, that's what we are betting on right now. One mistake. Either it will come from Russia, who's uh, running out of uh, ideas right now. Uh, Ukrainians are fighting... The Russians very, very hard, kick, kick them out of the four regions which they just annexed recently. And then right now, their people got arrested. So he's not going to sit there, do nothing. Uh, the annexation took place because he needed a, a, a law in the constitution to trigger a nuclear weapon. All right, so you have Russia, you have North Korea. I'm not too sure how many countries out there thinking about uniting a war right now, but this kind of conflicts will send the oil price shooting up. And that's what we are looking at right now. Okay, So we've gone through this deliberation already, and thank you all for uh, sharing with us um, about how you feel. <laughs> I mean, we are... We are studying it not because we wanted war to take place. Please don't get me wrong, right? We want to have peace, but certain things you just cannot avoid uh, as you study more about the global events. Okay, yesterday night, I also fired off my trade for Don't Stop Believing trade notification. Now, this is really important, and I want to make three points very clear to you. When we fire off a trade, it doesn't mean you have to get it transacted. You always fire off a trade at the price that you feel comfortable to transact on. So if the market price doesn't come to you, you don't have to rush and say, oh, I didn't get filled. You can start to move even higher. It doesn't matter. Because we're going to set different price point anyway. Okay? So point number one, don't go and rush to get filled. Point number two, one idea on a single oil stock will permeate to many, many oil stocks. I mean, just on the energy sector alone, there's about 20 different companies, 20 different stocks for you to play. Which one to play is the big question. All right? So this is where some of you start to become very uh, adaptable, very flexible. You say, teacher, I want to go after small cap stocks. Teacher, I want to go after mid cap stocks. Teacher, I want to go after dividend Dividend uh, dishing out stocks. Did, did you want to go for the top three mega stocks? Doesn't matter what your approach that you take. What matters is 
the price must move. But the price must move in a certain time frame, and this is the most difficult for this year for me. You know, every time you say the price must move, and then another surprise, and then another surprise, surprise keep piling on, piling on, piling on. Driven all because of one word called inflation. All right, so this is the part open to ideas. I start off the framework. We say, let's look at the universe of oil sector. Look at the trigger events. If you are convinced, then start attacking into individual stocks. The third point I want to carry across to you is this. Sometimes, right now, the profit cannot take place within one day or within one month because there are too many things happen at the same time. If the, we have a satirist priority burst like good market, Every single day, we can go and go out there and ring the bell and uh, catch the profits. But right now, the market is a bit different because Wall Street is divided. So divided. Number one, on their prediction of Jerome Powell as the chairman. Uh, is he going to raise more heights? Is he going to cut back on uh, raising heights? Uh, they try to front run the Fed chair. All right? And the other camp says that don't have to do anything right now. The market is condemned going down into recession for sure. Just let it drop. Drop until you drop to the next level, then you think again. Now, if everybody waits like this, <laughs> then of course, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. But you have two camps fighting with each other right now on this idea. Are we at the bottomless, bottomless, uh, bo bottomless pit? Or are we right now already hit the bottom, ready to rebound? Okay? Now, that is the part I'm preparing for 4th of November when I meet you live physical in person. I want that meeting to be a very, very eventful meeting. We're going to do a uh, video recording, uh, make sure capture is a milestone and in an auditorium setting, everybody really just there to learn and we exchange ideas. I open up time for you guys to ask me questions live from the floor and all that. That will be one of the major setting, I'm going to sit down with you and really uh, plan out the oil price strategy for the upcoming, I believe, a Santa Claus rally. All right. So with that in mind, these three points I just shared with you, make sure you really, really dive deep. Really deep. You must be convinced or else you cannot hold up the price. Little movement, little movement, you start to flutter and start to give up and you start to mess up your strategy and all that, and, and it's too bad. So this is the part I, I want to highlight to you first, okay? Now, with that in mind, then we go right across here. Not totally related to oil, but somehow related, which everybody knows the answer, but nobody there to say the answer. Ready? Here we go. Sweden says investigation into Russian pipeline leaks strengthens suspicion of gross sabotage. I'm talking about Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 right now. Look over here. This is how bad the situation is right now. Detonations at Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines in the Swedish exclusive economic zone which caused extensive damage to the pipelines. The EU suspects sabotage, but clearly as the incidents comes amid a bitter energy standoff between Brussels and Moscow. Russia has denied the Kremlin was behind the suspected attack, calling such accusations stupid. So this is the Bering Sea. Baltic Sea, and the gas, because, you know, the pipe got, got, got detonated, just keep releasing into, into the seawater, all right? So this is happening right now, and here we go. In order to send detonation, um, uh, in order... To, to burst such an important pipe <laughs> and you want to go to the bottom of the sea to detonate it, 
it is not a simple exercise where an ordinary man can execute. It is done by someone probably in the military, right? So uh, then you go right over here. This is all talking about the video footage and we come to this part here, uh, Swedish, right here. The magnitude of those explosions was measured to 2.3 and 2.1 on the richer scale. It's like a mini earthquake and likely correspond to an explosive load of several hundred kilos. So you, if you look at this, what are your thoughts? Who has the ability to send military forces inside there and uh, go and destroy it? All right. So I was thinking about this issue yesterday and I wanted to kind of uh, triangulate to arrive at my findings. And what I found out is quite shocking. And what I'm going to show you right now, and I encourage you to go out and investigate on your own. Don't just rely on what I've shared with you here or else it's uh, just one-sided. So, oh my gosh, I got so many tweets. <laughs> Hang on a minute, I got to find where I put it out yesterday. Wow, it's just too many. First October. I found it, and here we go. This is what I discovered, and I encourage you to go and uh, research on Twitter. I retweeted this tweet yesterday, and someone post this out. A US Boeing P-8 Poseidon Maritime Patrol and Reconnaissance Aircraft was the only military aircraft spotted above the Nord Stream pipelines at the times of detonations. This kind of aircraft is armed with torpedoes itself and sonar boys to communicate with submarines. And... This is the picture. Dun, 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 dun. There you go. So uh, there will always be traces with such a mini earthquake. You cannot hide. Uh, people will know about it. And right now, it seems that in the Twitter world, people are putting out this evidence already. All right. So very, very scary information. And then you come to this part here. By the same guy, for those who are still in doubt of means and motives of the US, I should include this video of Biden telling exactly about his intentions. So let me try to um, play this video. Hold on a minute. But how we... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again. Then uh, there, will be, uh, we, there will be no longer... North Stream too. We we will bring an end to it. But, do, but how will you how will you do that exactly? Since the project and control of the project is within Germany's control, we will. Uh, I promise you, we'll be able to do it. Uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the. Uh, okay, you heard it, and I'm sure with this lead. You can go and formulate your investigation further. Uh, becomes very, very interesting. Uh, why would the US push for this? I shared in so many of the videos that I can't even remember how many times I spoke about this. The history of US has always been on war path. And how they make money is because they have the most advanced weapon systems in the world. And every time there's an outbreak of war, their defense will sell like crazy. Uh, their defense systems, their defense weapons, their defense technology, anything related to fighting a war, they'll be at the front. So if you think about this case right now, of course, they do not want the oil price to go up. Then the enemies would want to play the opposite card. Since you do not want the oil price to go up, we'll make sure the oil price go up to kind of disrupt and, and give you more pain. So I'm looking at it from these two perspectives. First, you go out there, trigger war, and you know get, get people blacklisted, sanctioned, and those guys will not sit around, do nothing. 
while the sympathizer will also do something to benefit themselves, which we just seen as of yesterday, OPEC decided to cut output to push oil price further up, right smack one month above be, uh, just before the midterm election. So this is going on. And don't forget, Joe Biden's tenure will end in 2024, not 2022. Two more years. Uh, he will definitely punish those that is giving him a very painful time right now. And that's the thesis I'm working on. Okay. I shared enough for today. I think it's uh, uh, the individual stocks. Likewise, you know, I want to come back, revisit, look at some of the individual stocks, but not for today. Today is more about giving you the clarity, the context. And of course, there are many, more, many other materials I, I've, I'm not sharing in today's uh, YouTube live stream. I want to keep the really, really best for our live event on the 4th of November. And make sure you sign up for the event. Join us at Capital Tower, home of Tomase. <laughs> and, you know, we're going to have a great blast of a time together. Thank you so much for watching this video today. And I look forward to seeing you guys again tomorrow. May God bless you. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>